Mena Goodenough District in the Milan Bay Province, also known as the Trobran Islands, is famous for its yam festival as well as its rhythmic tapioca dance. It is also known as the Island of Love. In this episode, we take you to the Trobrian Islands where we feature the challenges they face in terms of health, education, infrastructure, as well as the launching of their first ever Kula Masawa Festival, which was launched on the 16th of September. We started off on an hour's flight from Port Mosby to Losui on the Kiriwina Island of Milan Bay Province. <music> Kiriwina Island is part of the Trobrian Islands. Trobrian Islands, as we know, is famous for its tapioca dance and is also known as the Island of Love. We landed on a nice little airstrip with a crowd of welcoming locals. They were as eager to see us just as we were as eager to see them. Our first stop was at the Lokoi Lodge, set at a pleasant sunset scene next to the shores. We moved on to visit Kiriwina High School. This school was once a primary school and was later converted into a high school in the 1980s. The school infrastructure has deteriorated over the years. However, the school's governing body and district administration have tried their very best to maintain and rebuild the school. Much has been improved following the receiving of funds in 2011 through the free education policy. This high school not only caters for students on the island, but also others from surrounding islands. Kiriwina High School caters for over 300 students. There are five grade 9 classes and four grade 10 classes. Evita tells us that the number of girls being sent to school in the area has increased. I'm a year 10 student of Kiriwina High School and um, I live around this place here and um, we've got not only students around this place, but also students from the Out Islanders attend the school also. And um, they, the ones that are far above us and the ones nearby are they students. Nowadays, we have um, a lot of girls attending uh, high school. Um, the number of girls are like improving. Why it is improved is because um, like nowadays, parents are educated and then like they've broke this like barrier from like their culture. So now they're like, they're sending their children, like especially girls to school. This indicates that locals are taking education seriously, especially for girls. Staff houses have been built for the school with the assistance of member for Kiriwina Good Enough and Minister for Forest and Climate Change, Honorable Douglas Tumoriasa. Deputy Prime Minister Grand Chief Leo Dion was also present for the opening ceremony. This electorate is, um, is one of the 89 electorates of this country. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, 6,000 wards in this nation, all right? 
and over 300 local level government similar to Bosuya, as well as um, 111 at the moment electorates where they are represented by leaders like the Minister for Forest. And I, I would like to, to acknowledge uh, 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 him and thank him for invitation to, to cut this ribbon, ribbon open to signify that this wonderful building is now officially open and God bless. It is hoped that in the near future, Kiriwina High School will soon be a secondary school. Attending school in the Chobrian Islands in the Milan Bay province would mean moving from one island to the next as you move further up the academic level. Many students have to leave their smaller island home after completing primary school to attend high school on the mainland islands such as Kiriwina and Goodenough. There are many Chobrian Islanders who have excelled academically in life and are now back home assisting their local people. Kiriwina Good Enough District in the Milan Bay province is no different to many other areas in Papua New Guinea. The district has its own challenges in terms of health, education and other infrastructural development. The problem here is in the last 35 years or so or more, there's no five-year development plan for this district. Nothing. Our elected leaders came in and just run the district ad hocly. And so what we decided, number one, is to make certain that we sit down and come up with a five-year development plan for this district. Education remains a key priority in the Kiriwina Good Enough District. The Trobrian Island, as it is also known, has for so long produced some of the country's leading intellectuals. Students from outer smaller islands have to move to mainland islands such as Kiriwina and Goodenough Island to attend high school. Kiriwina Island alone has only one high school which caters for students on the island and others from smaller islands as well. We spoke to Dr. Robert Mackay, a Trobrian Islander who spent his early days moving from one island to the next just so he could be educated. My name is uh, Robert Mackay. I come from Kitau Island, which is on the southeast of the Trobrian Islands. I did my early schools at Kitau Primary School and then went to Cameron High School at Alatau, did my grades six. Six to well, form one to form four at that time, then they call it, yeah, at Cameron High School. After finishing Cameron High School, I then proceeded to the University of Papua New Guinea. After the University of Papua New Guinea, then I got involved with the World Health Organization. I worked with the World Health Organization for a while, and then I got transferred to work as one of the specialist invest investigators with the Ombud uh, Ombudsman Commission, looking after the leadership division. After that, the government then sent me to do courses in the University of Fiji for one year. And then after that, I also went to U the University of East, East West Center in Hawaii. Then I also went to University of uh, Los Angeles in America for one year. Then I also, after that, I was then 
posted to do my master's degree in economics at the University of London. Mr. Mackay has traveled far and wide, and after all his experiences, he spent the last 12 years at home working alongside his fellow Trobrian Islanders. After having gone through that, I've, I've seen a lot of challenges. Not only back at home, but I think what the country also has to face. And I think my academic uh, experience uh, had, had broadened my knowledge of seeing how we can contribute towards the development of the country. Not only for that, but for that matter, for what I can do for my island alone, yes. So I've done a lot of uh, researches. I've, let's say I've, I've conducted a lot of workshops back at home in terms of leadership, management, and also on tourism back at home. And I, I hope, and I also could tell that my island people have done a lot in terms of improving their administration, improving their management, and also in their planning capacities. So far to this date, I think my island, and particularly for that matter, the whole of Drobrian Island, I think there is a lot of potential in manpower development. You can see now that a lot of university students are coming back home for reasons I think can only be explained by themselves. I, for one, think, and think that I might return back to my island for the last 12 years had broadened my knowledge in terms of what I can do to help my own people. Yes, my encouragement is basically a national focus, let us. I've seen from my broad uh, ideas that Papua New Guinea can do a lot of learning, can do a lot of risk coping in terms of what we think the country can do for us. And to do, to do things better for the country, I think we have to really educate, we have to groom the young leaders, and we have to see avenues where we can utilize our young people to get more experiences, more knowledge, and get trained into activities where we think they can come back and put a lot of effort into de developing the country. Apart from education, health and road infrastructure are other areas that are being looked at. Had you come to this island, the Trobin Islands, and also good enough on the other side, three years ago, there's nothing for you to see the presence of government here. The roads have deteriorated to a point where people have given up. The hospitals, mothers deliver under torch at night. Today, the hospital is fully wired, it's fully electrified, and mothers are enjoying uh, the hospital. Patients who come have got proper, better facilities, especially with lighting we will continue to improve the hospital facilities. We, you have witnessed Kiruna High School yesterday. Kiruna High School was a neglected high school. When, we first, when I first got voted in, one month after me being elected as the member, education department closed the school, health department, for health reasons. We have built the two ablution blocks you've seen yesterday. We have built the headmaster's house, the duplex. Uh, we have budgeted another 700,000 kina for the administration, administration building. There are two dormitories that have already been purchased and the construction work should begin very shortly at a cost of 700,000 kina. And uh, we continue to spend more money into education and health programs. Like many other areas in the country, the Kiriwina Good Enough District in the Milan Bay province is also facing effects of climate change. We spoke to their local member, Honorable Douglas Tumuresa, who is also the Minister for Forestry and Climate Change, on how he is handling the effect of climate change. The impact of climate change is heavily felt within a lot of smaller islands in the Kiriwina Good Enough district. We spoke to the member of Kiriwina Good Enough, 
Honorable Douglas Tumorusa, who is also the Minister for Forestry and Climate Change, on how the situation is like at the moment and how he is addressing climate change. The impact of climate change has really hit the islands. Uh, when you're flying in, in the air, you look down, you would see that uh, half of the islands are uh, covered by water. And people are moving to safer locations. But every time you move to a safer location, this is an island. It's very flat. It's affecting people's livelihood. Uh, they depend more on government for services. In terms of uh, when gardens are still slow uh, for the time of harvest, we have to come in and stand in to help our people. The Simsim Islands, Simsim Islands are not far from here. They are, it's about uh, 45 to an hour by a 40 horsepower dinghy from here to the island. And uh, at this stage, as we, uh, I speak to you, the Simsim Islands are struggling, are really struggling. I've organized some rice from Alatau. 100 bags and the rice is going, been transported over to the Simsimla Islands. The effect of climate change is really hitting our small islands. On the mainland of Papua New Guinea, you don't really see much of the effect of climate change. But out, out here, it is really hitting us. And we've tried our very best through certain initiatives to make certain that we help our people. But with nature's call, you know, you have no choice but to manage it. And so we are managing it with the uh, office of the governor of Milimbe and through the emergency relief. The national government has given us, I think, uh, six million for that cost. But yes, climate change is really affecting the lives of our people. Drinking water has become very scarce, as you know, and you've seen. Uh, every time there is high tide, our people cannot drink. They have to wait, wait until there's a bit of low tide and uh, whatever fresh water comes, they drink from. But what we've done here is we've, we're supplying water tanks to schools because there's catchment areas there where the classrooms are and health centers are. And so we're supplying water tanks. For the Simsimla Islands, we've already uh, got a contractor to come in to work on the, uh, the plant there. So we are hoping that uh, with the money being released by the Milimbe Provincial Government to us for emergency purposes, we can now complete the water, water supply on Simsimla Islands. So the 600 plus people on, the, on both islands, Kawa and uh, the other island out there, can also benefit from the same plant. Some locals have also built sea walls to tackle high tide and sea level rising. Despite various challenges in health, education, infrastructure, as well as climate change, the district is determined to tackle its challenges. And currently, the developments that are happening in both Kirin and Gurinov are not something that we just dream up and come up and start building. No, we are working on the five-year development plan. And so education sector is receiving its share of money. Health is receiving its share of money. The churches are also receiving their share of money. And we'll continue to drive these development issues on both islands. Because we've seen the initiative of the DSIP. The Deputy Prime Minister himself came for the opening of the uh, Kula Masao Festival. And he's witnessed what uh, DSIP is doing. And again, I just want to thank the Prime Minister for his initiative for the 10 million kina a year. And I'm seeing a lot of difference in, in the uh, development for this electorate. Next year, when we get more of our DSIP coming and more of uh, government's in initiative to build more roads and fix up the airstrips, we will do more. On Good Enough Island, we have supported the only secondary high school that we have here. We have given them uh, money to build t more teachers' houses and dormitories for our students. When I go over to Good Enough next week, I'll be going over to open up a classroom. I'll also be opening up a church on the 20th and on the 27th, a classroom out there. And uh, with the VTC down there, the Vocational Training Center. Down there, we've given them a quarter of a million 
and uh, they've put up three teachers' houses. I'm going down there to make certain that is done. We have a contractor that has been selected already to do the extension of the health center, uh, sub health center on Good Enough Island, Bolbol Health Center. And those initiatives that we now are driving, uh, initiatives that uh, should have been done a long time ago, had we ha ha have a, had a five-year development plan. That was not in place and initiatives, that, that initiative was never driven. Now that we have a five-year development plan, the review will come in 2016, the five-year de development plan. We would like to map forward a clear path for the future of this district. Papua New Guinea recently celebrated its 39th independence on the 16th of September. This date also marks the launching of the first ever Kula Mosawa Festival at Kaibolo Village in the Kiriwina Good Enough district of Milan Bay Province. With various challenges in health, education, infrastructure and climate change, the Kiriwina Good Enough district is determined to boost its human resource and economic activities through tourism. September 16 marks a very important day in Papua New Guinea's history. This year we celebrate our 39 years of independence on the 16th of September. This date also marked the launching of the Kula Masawa Festival in the Kiriwina Good Enough District of the Milimbe Province. The first question you may ask is, what is a Masawa? When you talk about uh, Masawas, uh, Masawas actually are the big uh, canoes. Some people would like to call them the uh, voyage canoes that move from island to island. And they, the Masawas are basically used for trading, the Kula trade, and the uh, exchange of goods between island and island. And Masawas are owned by very important people on the, on the Trobian Islands. When I was a young fellow, dad was teaching here, we would move from island to island because dad was teaching from uh, on a lot of islands around here. And so dad would uh, get us on the Masawas. And, uh, you know, those days traveling on Mas Masawa, it made the uh, des destiny look like it was very, very long. But now with the 40 horsepower dinghies, as you can see, there are a lot of 40 horsepower dinghies here. It takes just 20, 30 minutes to travel from one island to another. As you know, our culture is fading very, very quickly. And with our uh, culture fading very quickly, it, our heritage also go, goes with it. And so I've seen a lot of uh, our young people, actually the moder modernization of life has come very, very quickly, that it has caused them to either go lazy, number one, or number two, they've gone into trying to adapt into the new life, and it's caused a lot of problems for our people back home. So the launching of the Kula Masao Festival, number one is to reintroduce the culture back to the community. That's number one. Number two, as you know, because uh, the culture, like I said, is fading, we're trying to revive the culture. And by reviving the culture, we are now trying to connect with the national government's goal. And that is to bring tourism into our districts. There's lots to see, uh, lots, of, lots of boats, locals, artefacts, culture, um, sun, sand, everything. It's been, a, it's been a really good day and I don't think there'd be very many people that would be disappointed about their time on Kerawina today. The bonus for us landing here today is obviously Independence Day. Um, and, and all of that activity. I know chatting to some of the little dancers, they've traveled you know, two hours by foot to be here for us. So incredible privilege um, to be involved and, and to see that and to be able to photograph it. Um, it's been great. 
No, yeah, no disappointments. I'm looking forward to getting in that water. I've only put my feet in it, so. <laughs> Masawa Festival was launched by the Deputy Prime Minister Leo Dion at the Kaibolo village on the Kiriwina Island. The, uh, the Paramount Chiefs and the our local member, as well as the President and of course the organizing committee and the people of Peruvian. Me, I've now got uh, the privilege, the special privilege to, to uh, and honor to officially launch the Kula, Kula Masawa, Masawa Fest Festival. As you know, the cruise ships have come in, and uh, a week ago, two vessels came in, one with uh, 1,800 tourists on board, and the other with 2,000 tourists. Today you've witnessed another vessel coming with over 2,000 tourists. And uh, what I want to achieve is that whilst we're trying to revive and uh, have our culture be recognized by our people, our young people who are growing up, and also the tourists who will come and enjoy our culture, the other thing which is very, very important is the economical part of it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier today, on the Trobrin Islands, People, when you, when you talk about money to people, they know what money is. But having the substance in the pocket is the problem. And a lot of them do not have money in their pockets. And uh, we would like to uh, encourage some economic activity on this island. Despite various challenges faced by the people of Kiriwina good enough, they are determined to boost their human resource and tourism as well. And that's all for this episode. We would like to thank the people of Kiriwina Good Enough for their participation on this show. And a reminder that if you have any comments or stories you would like to share, please contact us via the address on your screen or visit us on our Facebook page. For now, enjoy the rest of your viewing.